Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop and another video here. Today we're going to be unboxing a new Cyclone Manufacturing Sandblast Cabinet. Picked up a new benchtop sandblasting cabinet. Ultimately that's what I want to use to finish some of these titanium handle slabs for my knives. And uh, you know I'm sure I'll come up with some other uses around the shop in, uh, in trying to use a sandblast cabinet. So I looked online, tried to read some reviews and find a good option that was out there. And I came across this Cyclone Manufacturing. It's www.cycloneblasters.com if you want to check them out. Thought I would go ahead and give them a try. Just to be really clear, I'm not sponsored by them. I just ordered it just like you would order it. So no discounts, no benefits. Just thought I'd do an unboxing and uh, check out how this works. I have not had a sandblast cabinet in a long time. Honestly, I don't think I've sandblasted anything since uh, high school. So been a lot of years, but I'm looking forward to being able to do that with a couple of parts. And I really like the way uh, sandblasted titanium or bee blasted titanium looks. So that's what I want to uh, go for on these knives and I want to give this a try today. So I'm going to turn the camera around here in a second. We're going to unbox this and uh, also check out the media that I purchased. I will tell you that uh, shipping prices have gone up pretty crazy. So uh, shipping on this cabinet was a little pricey and I ended up buying the media from someplace else where I could get free shipping on it. So I ordered the glass bead media from Zorro.com, had a 20% off coupon and they do free shipping for uh, anything over $75. So it was a much better deal to buy the bead blasting media from Zorro than it was to get that from uh, the same place where I got the sandblast cap. For those of you subscribed to the channel, I sure appreciate that subscription. Appreciate all the comments coming in and the feedback ideas on videos, the questions that you're sending. If you're new to the channel, want to see more videos on machining, welding, and like today, unboxing a new part, anything else we have going on here in the Blades to Be Shop, great time to hit that subscribe button and uh, know when the next video is coming out on the channel. So let's go ahead, turn the camera around, and let's take a look at this Cyclone cabinet. All right, so what we're going to pull out of the box here, this is their E100 LTC model. So it should have a small pencil wand. It's only going to run about three cubic feet per minute of air, which is good because my larger compressor only puts out five cubic feet per minute. So uh, this should be able to make it sustainable use. And I ordered the cabinet from them and I ordered uh, 12 extra of these Mylar covers for the glass to make sure we keep the, the actual window on here in good shape. And let's check out the cabinet. Pretty simple packaging. It doesn't weigh much. I think the whole thing only weighs maybe 25 or 30 pounds. So not a lot to it in here. And pretty simple operation and how that opens up. I think it comes with, yes, it has one Mylar already on there right now. So it comes with one of those pre-installed. And just a pretty simple foam seal around here. And pretty, just a heavy PVC cabinet. Interesting, just good plastic hinges, everything on here, plastic and rust proof. Nice clear looking piece of plexiglass under there. We'll leave that covered up for right now. Yeah, let's see what else we have in here. Great to set our parts on and keep that separate from the media going through to the bottom. Pretty basic operation, internal assembly. This operates with a, a foot switch. So it's got a pencil wand for the inside and operates with a foot switch. You don't have to stand there. You don't have to be in the box and hold the trigger the whole time. All right, looks like we maybe need to do a little assembly here on some of these pieces. But it looks like this just plugs into the fitting right here on the, the side of the cabinet. I'm not sure what the big washer is for. And I don't know, maybe some of those pieces were supposed to be in the bag, but they slipped out. Looks like we're double lined through the hose here. So we've got this outer hose and then we've got the smaller inner hose and there's our nozzle. So this one you are limited to media it has to be uh, 100 or smaller. So I plan to use the 100 to 170 I think is what I ordered here. Yes, yeah, the media that I ordered is 100 to 170 glass beads. So that'll make sure it's gonna fit through this nozzle that's on here. So not a whole lot to this. Gloves are attached in there with some big hose clamps. Looks like it's got some kind of a drain plug there out the bottom. Little bits of PVC in here. I think I'll probably do a quick uh, grab the vacuum and vacuum the inside of this out a little bit. Well, there it is out of the box. Not much to it. 
couple of hinges on the lid. It's got a little vent out the back. You know, the gloves seem plenty large enough. And we can get in here to operate this pencil type wand. And we've got a vent over here, so it's got that aluminum vent back here in the corner. And there's another vent back over here. Be able to hook the vacuum cleaner up too. Be able to shove my vacuum in there to keep the dust down to a minimum while it's operating. Seems to have adequate ventilation. They give you a spot here, you can put a light bulb. So it comes wired with the switch and everything. You just have to add your own light bulb, whatever you want to put in there. And it's got this drain down here that just pushes in so you could quickly push all your media out if you want to. That's a Seems to be the, the weak spot on the whole unit, just a very thin little push-in cap right there, but again, it doesn't really have to do much either, so that should keep the media in place. All right, and then we've got this foot switch, so I think I'm just going to go put some little bit of Teflon tape on there, and all these pieces are, are loose right now, so put some Teflon on there, and I will stick my air fitting onto the end of that. Plug this piece of vinyl in right over here to this air fitting on the side, and uh, yeah. We should be in operation here in just moments. All right, let me go ahead and get a little Teflon on here, hook up an air fitting, get the vacuum on there, clean the inside of that out a little bit, and we'll put some air to this. And we'll check out and see how it works. All right, so we got the screen in there. And I get the, the double wall on this hose right here. I guess last time I used a sandblaster, it was like you had one little wand that you were in there scooping up the media with. So with this one, it appears that the media is just getting sucked up through this outer layer of the hose right here. So it's got a pretty good hopper. It's got a pretty good feeder down in here, so it should feed pretty well. But uh, we'll have to see if it needs to, you know, any help trying to suck that up. Uh, the other thing is... It's pretty good cavity back in here going down into the legs. So on one hand, um, you know, maybe I'll just end up filling those up with media so that that adds a little bit of weight to the cabinet and helps keep it down. Otherwise I can see that, you know, that's maybe media is going to collect down into those legs and you'll be trying to dump that back up into the middle pile. So uh, maybe to prevent that, like I say, I may just keep those full of media and then that would eliminate that problem and the media is just gonna stay flowing towards the middle. But otherwise, again, pretty simple looking design. Let's get this grate back in here and I'll go finish hooking up this air fitting. No leaks, don't hear anything. And we've got airflow. Let's move this outside. I plan to do most of my sandblasting outside, even though I will hook a uh, vacuum up to the cabinet just to keep the dust out of it to make sure I can see what I'm doing. I don't want any of that extra dust flying around inside my shop. Don't need all that abrasiveness landing on things like the lathe, the milling machine, all those tables. So we'll do that outside. It's a nice toasty Texas fall day out there today, but let's go outside and put some media in this and let's just test blast a couple of pieces and see what it looks like. Let's go. All right, here's this media I picked up from Zorro. It's definitely pretty fine. It's such an interesting slippery feel to it, but uh, we'll go ahead and get some of that dumped in there. All 
All right, so I got three different sample pieces that we'll try this on. I've got a piece of just raw, unfinished aluminum. I've got this piece of titanium. It's got machining marks on one side, completely unfinished on the other side. It's some rough, sharp edges. And I've got a dirty piece of aluminum here. We'll see what it does to clean that up. So those are the three pieces that I've got. I put a light bulb in there, but it's bright enough out here right now. I don't think we can hardly see that light bulb doing anything. And uh, we'll see if it'll zoom in a little bit. I'm not sure how much it'll show up while it's working inside the cabinet, but we'll give it a try. I've got the vacuum hooked up there. Should keep the dust down and keep our visibility up. Yeah, looks like we'll be able to see a little bit in there. All right, so it does not seem to be able to pull any media up the tube. It's kind of started in the tube. It's got it up a little bit there, but that's about as far as it is getting it. So I've got lots of air coming out the nozzle, but I don't think I have much media coming out there at all. I'm barely doing anything to even knock the dirt off of this piece of aluminum. Well, the first test run with this was a serious disappointment. Spent about 15, almost 20 minutes really concentrated in that one area, and that was about all the mark that I could make. So that would definitely not be sufficient use of trying to make some parts in here. I cut out a lot of the just constant trying to run it. I was trying to get media up in the tube. I was shaking the hose. I was trying everything I could think of and couldn't get it to run properly. But hey, stand by, we do eventually get this blast cabinet working, but it takes a couple of emails back and forth with Cyclone. So I'm gonna send my first email off to him right now, and then we'll talk through some of the troubleshooting steps that they send back to me. So let's go ahead and jump ahead to our next try on this. And the corners do fill up with media as anticipated, but again, I think once they're full, just leave them full and it shouldn't be an ongoing issue. All right, so we are back for Round two with this Cyclone Sandblast Cabinet Review. We got my same pieces in here. So last, last time we left off with, uh, that was as much as we accomplished in five to 10 minutes with this. The tube was just filling up with sand, would get about halfway full, just really wasn't putting any media out the end. Uh, so good plus one for customer service for Cyclone. I sent them an email late on Friday night and I had a response back from them first thing on Monday morning. So here it is, Monday afternoon, and we're going to try a couple of different things they recommended. Right now, I have the air disconnected and unplugged, and they said to unscrew this and check, make sure we don't have any clogs. So I'm looking, and this top nozzle perfectly clear on the end, and I can see the two holes in the side there completely clear, so we definitely don't have any clogs going on. So everything is clear there. The other thing they recommended is to drop the pressure. I had tried 90 PSI and 120 PSI, and they recommended drop it down even lower to 70. They said really the tube isn't designed to fill up with media. It should just be kind of an invisible stream going all the way up. And uh, so we'll see if we're getting good suction or not. So I've got it set at 70 PSI right now. Let's see what we're doing at 70. And uh, let's see if we can't get this thing to operate like it is supposed to. So. Hopefully we get decent lighting here. We'll close the lid and we'll see what happens. I think, yeah, wherever my shadow is, I think we'll get some, we'll get some lighting or we'll get some visibility there. So there we go. Once I get in there, I think we'll be able to see what's happening. Hook the air back up.
That's another 25 minutes or so of playing around here. I had a couple of times where it almost wanted to go and I tried it down at 70 PSI. I dropped it down to 50 PSI. I dropped it all the way down to 30 and then down to 20 PSI. I got it to where I could hold the pedal and it would dump sand out the end of the nozzle when it wasn't blowing, but if I kept steady air pressure on, it wasn't putting anything out. I think I was getting some of the, I mean, we definitely made more progress than we did last time, but I also went almost a full 30 minutes I've gone here, and no consistency. I mean, I can't get an even spray pattern on there at all on that little spot. Uh, even tried on the backside a little bit, you can't even tell. So still no consistency. Um, I went all the way back up to 120 PSI. Uh, I can definitely get media up to the end of the, the gun, but it's almost like it's got like a, a backflow or something right there at the end so that when you drop the pressure off completely, it'll pour some sand out the end. But if you've got full air pressure on, it's blowing the media back and, uh, and nothing's happening. And then I think when I've got it down at like 20 PSI, I think some media is coming out the end but then it's just not coming out with enough pressure to accomplish anything uh, i'll send them another email and we'll see what response we get back this time but definitely still don't have this dialed in and working at this point stay tuned one more time all right we are back here for a third time is a charm we're going to see if we can get this working tonight so got some additional feedback and since this media tube is completely filling up with media it's drawing all the way up there they said that that is not normal so it seems like it's not getting enough air I mean, we're definitely not clogged you can see it pouring sand out the end if you just tip it up and move it through there but yeah it shouldn't be filling up with uh, with sand like that with media seems like it's not getting enough air it's all the suction it's only sucking and it's almost clogging the hose so we're gonna test it first I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this from the bottom of the cabinet and we're gonna just try to lower it down gently into the media so it's kind of on a 45 and only half of the the outer hose is in the media and see if that draws enough and if that fixes it if that works then we'll come back after that let me go ahead and get this out of the way so if we test it and if that works then we're going to go about an inch inch and a half above where our media is which you know if it's full all the way up to here we're gonna go somewhere about in this area and we're gonna put a little hole in just the outer line, making sure we don't punch through to the inner hose, which is our, our air line. And we're gonna put a little 3 16 or a quarter inch hole in there and that way it can draw enough air in with it, mix enough air in that uh, we'll see if that works. But first step is, this is connected down here to the bottom of the cabinet. So I need to clean the media out of here enough that I can get a screwdriver on that disconnect that from the bottom and once I get that disconnected we can pull this hose up and I'll be able to just poke that inside and see if that'll work. So that's our test for today. See if we get this cabinet and uh, sandblast kit working for us. Well that was quite melted and stuck together. That's all right thankfully I've got another one of those. So bit of a melt on the hose there as well and the other piece of it is stuck on the bottom of the cabinet so we'll scrape that off before we put it back together but let's test it first let's find out if we got it working and then we'll sort out these other little issues we've got here all right i'm going to set that back there so that i can have it sitting on something while i try to manage both ends of that hose Okay, I would say we had some success this evening. That appears to be our issue, so here's what we accomplished before. A little bit of bead blasting on there and all of our work here in just a few minutes. You can see the, there we go, that's better lighting I think. You can see how dirty this end is down here. And what I was able to go through and bead blast this entire top section up here. Got that cleaned up. And that's trying to hold and balance multiple pieces. I think once I get a hole in that line, it should work even better than that. So we got that piece done. And there we go. I did a little bit on this piece as well. Try to get the lighting. Yeah. So this is the machined, unbead blasted surface here. And I was able to bead blast all of that down there. Flip that the other way around. But the bottom line is I was getting consistent spray coming out of there. 
So that was my issue, is it was just sucking too much, had too much suction, and it was getting all media in there, wasn't able to mix in enough air to draw that. So we're gonna punch a hole in this tube, and, uh, and that should fix our problem and get it to where it's pulling in some media as well. Also had a chance to work on this piece of titanium a little bit, and it almost took the machining marks off of there. So again, try to get the light on this where you can see it. I'll try to maybe drop in a picture of it here to make sure I get good lighting on it. But here's the machining marks on this half of it, and all up in here on the end, I got rid of those machining marks. Don't know if you can see it in the video, but you actually get little sparks coming off of that titanium as you're bead blasting it. Uh, but yeah, that has a pretty nice feel right there. So I think that's going to look good. Maybe scotch bright it and then you can bring it in here just to even it up a little bit or rub it with some emery really quick and then bring it in here just to even that up a little bit. So I think that's going to work well. All right, well, bottom line, it is working. So just the issue we were having is did not have enough air getting mixed in with our suction. So we have fixed that. Let me punch a hole in that. We'll get it bolted back in place and then we'll be able to do a little bit better test when it's fully assembled again. Let's take a look. So I set out to clean up a little bit of sand, get in there and scrape off that piece of plastic that was melted to the bottom. So I'd be able to clamp it back down again. Got that cleaned up and then got a few of my tools together, marked on the tube exactly where I wanted to put this hole in there. I was a little scared to use a drill. Didn't want to uh, punch through the inner lining. So I got a couple other things pulled together and came up with a different idea. All right, so instead of a drill, I'm going to try to use this gasket punch and just get about half of it on there and punch it. And I think that will save me from accidentally going through the wrong part of this line. And that did, that carved a nice, near perfectly round hole out of there, saved me accidentally drilling in there too deep. So I think that punched out a nice little hole. Let's screw this back together and let's see what we got. So I found another clamp, got it all put back together, got the cabinet back together, the media line back up, and let's go ahead and give this thing another test run. All right, well, that's kind of working. Now that the hole is there, I've tried holding my finger over it and try to get the right mix of air in there to get good constant suction, and it's a, a bit of a constant battle. So I think we at least figured out what the issue is, what the problem is. I think maybe this is still a faulty gun and we're gonna have to overall replace the, uh, the gun mechanism in here, but at least we have figured it out, got it partially working. I'll email back, see what they tell me, but I think maybe we need to come up with a little better solution than just a random hole in the hose to get it really operating consistently. Definitely worked better today than it has so far, so we'll call that success for this evening and see where we get to. Stand by one more time. I traded a few more emails with Cyclone. They had me try to tape up half the hole, uncover it, cover it, and see if we could get some consistency. When that did not work, they ultimately sent me a new gun, and let's go ahead and get that new gun installed on here. Let's see if we finally get this thing working. I think there's a good chance we're going to. All right, well, we're here to try this again. So they sent me a new hose, new blaster kit. I'm in the process of trying that one out. We'll see if that's the problem. They said they tested this one before they sent it, so it should be good to go. I'm just gonna finish screwing that in place and we'll give this another go and see if we finally have it set up properly where it's gonna work. Let's finish getting this thing installed. Well, the good news is it seems to be working pretty consistently. Did that whole side there in just a matter of a couple of minutes. My issue now is that screw doesn't seem to be sticking down in the bottom of the cabinet anymore, so the hose is not held down where I need it to be, so now it's moving around. So let me play with that, get that hose put in there properly, get that screw back securing it to the bottom. But uh, yes, I think this new gun is working. It's not just filling up the tube. It seems to be just moving media the way it's supposed to be. So I think we're gonna be set and in good shape. Let me see if I can't get it secured properly and do a, a good final test.
All right, here's a couple of freshly machined pieces of aluminum. Let's see what we can do to get rid of those machining marks. Hey, all right, we have full success at this point. I am happy with how that is working. So we should be able to clearly see the difference in these two pieces. So these were similar when I started and uh, you can see I've got a nice bead blast on the aluminum. Took those machining marks right off of there. Didn't quite totally clean them up down on the sides, but... Sides, but pretty much. If you look on the back side, you can see half of that one I bead blasted, the other one not at all. And this was taken just a matter of minutes. Um, you know, I went back and grabbed that piece of titanium, played with this piece of titanium quite a bit longer. I mean, it gives it a nice look. It doesn't completely take the machining marks out on the titanium like it did on the aluminum. So I think I'd have to rub my titanium a little bit on the on some emery to get the, some of the machining marks out, maybe with that scotch bright wheel, and then I can come and finish it on here to give it a nice even look. But uh, clearly I'm moving media through there at a good steady pace. It's working. So that gun doesn't look like anything was wrong with that other one. Visibly you can't see any difference between the two, but this one just moves media and works perfectly. The other one was not. So I would say I am finally finished with my unboxing and uh, my review of this Cyclone cabinet. Cabinet works great. Um, you know, not having any media flying out. It's got a little vent. Um, I'm not even having too much media fly around inside the box. I didn't even have to have the vacuum hooked up to it to be able to see. I'm outside. I've got great ventilation going on here, but I could easily hook my vacuum cleaner up over here if I wanted to. But overall, I would say success. Very happy with how this cabinet performed. Uh, now that they sent a new gun, that is working great. I can attest to their customer service there at Cyclone. They're very responsive with emails and walked me through the problems I was having. Kept trying to offer up solutions and finally they replaced the gun and uh, that nailed it. Seems to be working perfectly now. I think this will serve me well as a, a nice little blast cabinet. Doesn't take up much room and maybe at one point I'll, I'll fill the legs with some concrete or epoxy as I've seen some others do online. But I honestly, I don't plan on changing my media types very often. Uh, this is about the coarsest I can use. This is the 100. I don't know that I'm ever going to fill the legs. I'll probably just leave them full of the media like they are right now and that's nice. Adds a little bit of weight, holds it in place. I think I'm set. Well, YouTube, that's a wrap on another video here in the Blades to Be shop as we unboxed, tested out this Cyclone blast cabinet. And after a little customer service, after a couple issues, Cyclone was great, replaced the gun, and it is working as planned. So appreciate you watching these videos. If you're subscribed to the channel, I sure appreciate that. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, now would be a great time. Catch up on all the next videos we have coming out in the future. Till then, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own, testing out some new equipment of your own. We'll be here in the Blades to Be shop working on that next video. Until we get that one out, y'all take care.